how's it going? I'm getting ready to harvest my sweet potatoes, finally. They take so long to grow, it's so hard to wait. So I planted these on May 16th and they have about 120 day maturity, which was about 20 days ago, but the vines still looked so good that I let them stay in the beds a little bit longer. Typically, you know they're ready to harvest when the ends kind of turn yellow, let me show you. So before, they all looked really nice like that. And that was about September 15th when the maturity date kind of came and went. Uh, but now they're starting to look a little bit more yellow. They're starting to die back a little bit and it's supposed to freeze um, probably in the next week. So I thought it would be a good time to get them out. You can kind of see one right there. How exciting. So I planted two different varieties. I planted 20 Covingtons, which are a uh, sweet potato that has orange skin and rose colored flesh. And then I planted Diane's in this bed right here um, that are a yam type sweet potato that have the darker orange flesh and they're a little bit more moist. Um, some of the Diane's didn't survive so I popped a few more Covingtons in there. I have 30 slips planted in total. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna get because the soil was very hard when I came in here to plant. I had actually a hard time getting my digging fork in there and uh potatoes, root crops of any kind, they need light fluffy soil to form really well. So I don't know what I'm gonna find today. It's a good learning experience, especially when you plant something for the first time in a location, and every year you can improve on it. Um, so anyway, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna cut back all the foliage so it makes it easier to get to the soil. I got all of the foliage removed and I figured that would make it a lot easier to not have all that in my way. And you can already see some tubers pushing up out of the ground, which is encouraging. Hopefully there's a lot of activity going on underneath the ground. We'll just have to wait and see what we find. I did accidentally pull one out of the ground already and it's a good size one, so that's awesome. This is a Covington. So like when you're harvesting your regular potatoes or really any root crop, you have to be kind of careful when you're digging around in there so that you don't damage the plant. So I try to go kind of as far away from the main like uh, stem of the plant and pry the soil up with a garden fork. Uh, and then I have my regular trowel as well. So I'll be using a combination of these two tools right here. Um, there's all the tops, all the greens, filled up my bag. So I think I'm just gonna start in this corner. So there are all the Covingtons out of the three by six bed. I am so thrilled, you guys. I think that this is an amazing harvest for my first year. Of course, there's some things that I can do to uh, make bigger tubers next year, like I could fertilize more. Um, typically, these are heavy feeders, so just the initial fertilizer isn't enough, and that's all that these got this year. But there's some nice size ones in here. I mean, good sized potatoes. There's some really crazy shaped ones too. <laughs> and I think that that is a result of having hard soil, as well as some of the smaller ones that I've got going on in here. I think if I work up that soil a little bit better, they'll be able to form uh, a lot bigger tubers. So I'd call that a success so far. So all of those were out of that first bed. I have one more bed to harvest. That's a three by four, and it's actually in more shade than this first one. So we'll just see um, how much different the harvest is out of that one. And that bed only has 10 slips planted as opposed to this one, which had 20. Look at the difference. This is a Diane, you guys, as opposed to a Covington. Huge difference in color, even when they're still dirty. Oh, it's so pretty. Look at the color. Whoa, look at that. Second bed is done. There are the Covingtons, there are the Dianes. The poor Covingtons don't look near as fun as the Dianes do. Like, look at the color. Also way more productive. Even though these were in the shade, there were only actually eight vines in there that survived out of the 10 and only, uh, 
four of them were Diane's and four of them were Covington's. So you can see the difference in the harvest right there. That's pretty crazy. Now that I've got all the potatoes harvested and I'm so happy with how many I got for the first year, I've got to cure them. So this is a really important step because this is when the sugars will start to form and you won't have really sweet, sweet potatoes unless you do this step. So what we do is we find a spot that stays between like 75 and 80 degrees um, or as close to that as possible and some are a little bit more humid as well. So I'm actually going to be putting them in the greenhouse and we leave them in there for about 10 to 14 days just in a single layer on the ground and they're safe in there. You want to make sure it's a dry place too like it's not going to rain on top of them um, which it won't in there because it's got a cover on the top and then after that 14 days they should be ready for storage. So during that curing process they'll also kind of form a second skin as well now that they're out of the soil in, and in fresh air. So anywhere where they got like nicked or like where I accidentally bruised the skin when I was rubbing off some of the dirt, that will heal over and it'll make their shelf life way longer. You know what, better yet, I'm gonna clear off one of these tables because these have just that chicken wire top. This is perfect for air circulation. And then I'll line them up on the table. So here they all are. And these tables are actually perfect. I never thought about uh, curing potatoes and onions out here. These are ideal with all the airflow that comes through the wire. Um, so this curing process, things like this right here, see where I accidentally rubbed the skin off a little bit too much? That will heal over so that this potato will store a lot longer. So basically I'm done for today except for cleaning up all of my tools. So these potatoes have to just sit in here for a couple weeks and then I'll be moving them inside into our basement for storage. Um, and typically they like to store between like 50, 55 degrees, which it stays a little bit warmer down there than that, but not a whole lot. Um, so I find that my stuff stores really well. And I think we are going to be put, putting together a video about how I store my produce. We're going to do it down in the basement. It's going to be kind of a dark, weird video, but I just want to show you guys how I'm planning on prolonging my harvest. Um, because that's really important when you grow things to be able to one like donate any extra that you may have and then two if you can store it in any way possible to extend your season so that you can be eating your own fresh stuff and this, these are all organic um, I think that's awesome so and I didn't think I mentioned but I think I got close to 50 pounds which is awesome I'm so proud of this harvest so anyway I hope this video was helpful to you guys um, I'm hoping for an even better crop next year aren't we all but anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.